Hello, I'm Heidi Parks, and today I'm at the Portrait Society Gallery. From my channel, you re might remember the tour that we did of Seams back in 2020. And now I am here for a tour of a new exhibition, Crisscross, and I've got Paul to introduce himself and show us around. Hello, my name is Paul Salseeder. I'm here at Heidi Parks today to show you a little bit around uh, Portrait Society Gallery of Contemporary Arts current exhibition, Crisscross. It's uh, uh, just a little bit about the gallery. It's owned and directed by Deborah Bremer, who uh, is, is away in London, can't be here for this tour today, unfortunately, but uh, I will sub in and do the best I can to describe all these amazing artists and their work today. Um, so yeah, should we take yeah. a little spin around the exhibition? I mean, we'll start on the on the title wall of the show. This is Rosemary Allison, a local artist based here here in Milwaukee, and her work she she finds kind of whatever she can. And she always goes to thrift stores, Goodwill, uh, and will find old clothes, old pieces of leather, and will end up. Um, taking taking them apart and recombining them. This piece is is all made out of a, a large group of tablecloths that Rose. Oh, was. I didn't realize they were tablecloths. Yeah, she found awesome. a huge number of them and was able to, to tear them apart into this really large, wonderful work. And she's such a local treasure. She she's absolutely got, is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as we turn the corner, this is one of three quilts of mine that are in the exhibition. This is from also 2020, I believe, is when I finished it. It's a travel diary quilt that I made when I was traveling in India. And it's part of when I was figuring out what is a diary quilt? How does that work? This has a lot of artifacts in it. And Paul, it was really special to hear from you and Deborah that you were a little bit inspired with the theme of crisscross with knowing that there would be some of my travel diary quilts in the show uh, with the idea of border crossing and how else did you describe? Border crossing, journeys, and, um, and, and transitions in place are kind of an overarching general theme of this exhibition. Not, not every piece perfectly fits that mold, but it, it's, it's, a, it's a loose thread that ties the exhibition together. Yeah, and, and that's one of the things that I love about these travel diaries. So these are two newer quilts. I made both of them this year in 2024, and I began this one first. It's my Japan travel diary quilt that I, I made while I was in Tokyo, Kyoto, and Gata teaching some classes there. And again, I continued to have some nice artifacts that I put in the quilts. So there's lace doilies and a handkerchief that I got in an antique market. I learned this technique for chiku chiku stitching before I went on the trip, that anticipation phase of traveling. And then this quilt I began in July when I was teaching in Sardinia, Italy. And it similarly has some things that I did while I was there. One of my favorites is these cyanotypes that I made by exposing the fabric to the sun. This is a bit of a dress that I got when I was teaching in France the year before. And I have some text on here, it says, and the day came when I returned and then so many words tumbled once more from my lips. And that's really partly about the magic of realizing that I retained a lot of my Italian language speaking skills, even though I hadn't been there in 12 years since 2012. And then... Um, so yeah, yeah, we'll take a, just I'll peek in here for a moment for scale on this absolutely mm -hmm. amazing, tiny, tiny piece by Ray Matterson, who's an artist that's represented uh, by Andrew Edlin Gallery in New York, and this piece came courtesy of their gallery. And he is a, is a formerly incarcerated artist who would make all of his work by taking apart the threads from socks and then using those to, to embroider. So, and they're all, many of them are very, very emotionally charged pieces. You know, they, they kind of beg you to 
to look closer because they're so tiny and detailed, and then they, they sort of shock you with, with what is happening in the composition. I love how that frame, the border, is so significant as well. It allows you to zoom in. Okay, this way. So this piece is by a young artist, Anika Kowalik, uh, who's based in Milwaukee as well as currently doing a, a residency in, in Brooklyn. A very exciting. Uh, and their work is really engaging with themes of identity. The, the piece is self-titled. In, in some ways, it's, a, it's Anika's self-portrait. And it's based on a word in, in Hausa. Her name, uh, Anika's name, excuse me, means, means beautiful. And in Swahili, the name Anika means, or the, the word Anika means to dry, and engaging with this process of, of tanning and leather work. So the, the piece is also structured in a way like, like one large stretched hide as, as well, too. So it, it's engaging with issues of, of body. This, this. Yeah, these grommets are a really interesting way to hang in, and then they're not only at the top, they go all the way around. In, indeed, and, mm -hmm. and Aniko is very intentional too about wanting the grommets to, to feel like a hide that had been, had been stretched mm -hmm. as well to mm -hmm. like this pole of what a body could be. Oh, wonderful. Now this artist we'll see a couple more times, but we can share. Absolutely, I'll just, you know, this artist is Natasha Das. Uh, who's represented by Mark Strauss Gallery, uh, based in New York as well. To the, the pieces, this piece and two others in the show all come courtesy of Mark Strauss as well. But the the careful attention to the embroidery and just the, the love and, and care with this material is you know, so clearly felt in these in these pieces. Mm. Well, and the gaps in the spacing are interesting, where you're seeing the fabric through behind it over here. And then there are only two occasions where it's, or maybe three, <laughs> a couple, a handful of occasions where it's multiple thread colors at once. This is quite a few shades of pink that it's, I can see versus just one shade of red, one shade of the blue, but just really lovely color blocking. It's very, very subtle and very mm -hmm. painterly almost. There's even these regions where, where Natasha takes these threads and, and spaces them even more widely and it creates an almost different color. Mm. And these very sharp edges versus the softer transitions. Absolutely. I love this one moment where it feels mm -hmm. like the threads are almost clawing into that red. Yeah. Oh, that's a good word for it. Okay. And over this way. Uh, this piece by artist Yun Kispe, uh, the piece is titled Day Mama, Night Mama, and, and is about the idea of giving up a child. Uh, she had talked about the idea of, of, of Moses and Moses' mother being given up by, by Pharaoh's daughter, or be, being given up and then taken by Pharaoh's daughter. And this, this idea of, of an exchange of, of parents, of you know, having one mother at one point and another mother at different points and, um, and, and reconciling what what it means to be a mother, what it means to be a family, can these can these roles that seem so permanent and fixed be be in some way transitional? And another thing that's just really incredible about this piece is the mixing of painting and textiles and all of these founds textiles and processes all coming together. It's really a, a massive collage. And, it's amazing to me the juxtaposition of the very detailed painting on the face and then a pot holder that was crocheted and little bits of lace and little bits of patchwork with the, the variety of things and how they feel so unified and whole but then you get up close and you're able to parse them out and see their separateness. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, I, I mean, just as a very, very quick little mm -hmm. anecdote. I was, I was recently embarrassed a few days ago <laughs> since I've been watching and really looking at this piece every day of work for like a month. 
And then someone came into the gallery and said they really liked the, the alligator. And I was like, where is the alligator? And there's a, an amazingly oh. painted alligator at the, at the end of this stream that kind of runs its way through the background of, of the piece. And it, it, I, I, cannot, I cannot believe I had never, um, never seen it. So I, I don't yeah, wow. know why exactly I shared it, but it's just, <laughs> it's just a piece you, you really can look for days and days and days, and it does not stop. Yeah, it keeps unfolding. unfolding. So, yeah. mm -hmm. Let's take a look at Gigi's piece. So this is the largest piece in the in the show, done by Gigi Gastovich. And it, it is a it's a jacquard weaving process. It's it's quite similar to the process of um, of medieval tapestries, if you know, if, if not in execution at least in in how it's assembled. Uh, and she sources all of her her materials for, for these pieces from captcha images. So from those security images when you're you know going through your your you know forget a password and you have to select in this very generic oh, image yeah. where where's where's a street light or where you know which tiles of this image contain a bus. They're always these liminal images that are poorly composed and just not terribly interesting uh, scenes, but she's able to transform them and using you know this very almost digital color palette of you know cyan, magenta, and yellow yarn, mm -hmm. she's dialoguing with, with this idea of the, this piece as a screen and and ideas of of computer labor versus human labor. This is a partly digital process where the, the loom that she's using can can set the threads in the correct position, but she still by hand is, is combing down all of the threads into place. So there's there's a, a really interesting dialogue between between human and machine. Well it's just working with the limitations of the loom too. There are these two big seams here where mm -hmm. you know, they, they were gone through the loom separately and then she matched them up with each other and you know just kind of saying yes and with what she's able to do. The number of tiny, thin, almost sewing machine size threads that create the warp are really a lot compared to them this thicker, what looks to me like an acrylic, right, acrylic yarn yeah. across. Uh, at the opening reception, it was so fun to have a lot of the artists there, and I got to meet Gigi. She's um, a fellow alumni for the Art Institute of Chicago, the School of the Art Institute of Chicago, so it's fun to get to talk to her since I graduated in 05, and she just graduated last? Uh, yes, just last year. Yep. Yeah. Okay, and then over, this is the perfect yeah. point because we're about to see multiple works from one person. So both of these pieces, the sculpture here and this piece on the wall, are by Chicago-based artist Monica Resman. And most of, of the work, the, the piece on the wall certainly is, it's, it's all canvas, it's painted, but she's been able to transform the canvas. I, I, I was just talking with someone earlier today about this idea of, of paintings as textiles because they're on a, a textile surface, but so often painting kind of seeks to erase what, what is behind the painted layer. Mm -hmm. and, what Monica does so brilliantly is she, she brings the textile layer forward and, and the painting almost has to take the back seat in, in this composition. Yeah, because she's painting first and then sewing. Exactly, exactly. The, the sewing gets pulled through to the front. Well, and it's a wonderful silhouette. Deb and I have talked multiple times about textiles and how when you are filling a collector's home with art. It can be rectangle, rectangle, square, and that that can be hard to break up visually in a home, and that then you get the textile, and it has this wonderful silhouette that goes around the edge, and how it's, just, it's, it's a pause, and it changes the inside of a space. There's something so great I, I, to that point about, about the silhouette of so many of these, these pieces in the show. They are irregular. They they're unconfined. They don't 
can point to these boundaries that, that painting so often has to exist within this rectilinear space. And now, you can check out Judith Mullen. And Judith Mullen is another Chicago-based artist who began several years ago experimenting with, with plaster and yarn to try to emulate to, to emulate tree bark. Yeah. And you know, it, it, it's like a remarkably successful thing that she's done to, 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 to find that kind of emulation. And, and yet it's such a different material. It's not like none of the materials are really related to the tree bark as well, even though the appearance very much is. And it's, it's a remarkably sturdy material as well too. They look extremely fragile, but you know, the plaster may, may crack, it may flake a little bit, but the pieces don't fall apart. The, the two, mm -hmm. the yarn and the plaster together kind of complement each other quite perfectly. And Heidi just showed you a close up. The, mm -hmm. the surface is, is rather amazing thing with these pieces. That is, it's just remarkable that it can be transported relatively easy. And or even, yeah. you know, just to share a little bit of the, mm -hmm. the, the transport, to bring it to, to the gallery, you know, the, the artist, uh, Judith Mullen, she, she's just like folded them in half over a little bit of padding material, but they, they can actually, they're, they're mm -hmm. bendable and flexible, which mm -hmm. they do not appear that way, I think, on first glance. Wow. Yeah, and you know, tree bark itself is manipulated so often by artists as well, that Absolutely. it is not just a flat material either. Quite exactly. Horrible. It's solving that issue, yeah. and even as it's growing on the tree, I mean, it's constantly moving and warping and changing, figuring out how to be both flexible and rigid. Mm -hmm. Now this next piece, I remember getting to see it a little bit early when I dropped my work off for the show. Um, yeah, share about Kate with us. Yeah, so Kate Flake is a, is a Madison-based artist, and she's she's in, in her MFA program, and you know, was making work, there are cyanotypes of, of her body as she's going through the, this, this process of being unsure of if she has uh, breast cancer mm. or not. So they're, they're, very, they're very charged emotionally, these pieces, and there's often almost a, a some of a, of a classical pose to them, this piece. In yeah, and we're gonna see more of her work as we go around the, around the gallery. Absolutely, so, well, and this piece is at least Marie Barber, who is a, uh, a fairly well-known ceramicist in, in Wisconsin as well. She teaches at UW Parkside um, and also has this quilting practice where she, you know, she'll, she'll draw on these quilts, she'll, you know, whether, it's, whether it's drawing with some kind of traditional drawing medium or whether it's with, with a sewing machine. Some of these invented structures are completely stitched and pieced together in this very freeform way. I'm noticing it's a very natural mix of machine and hand, where the yellow is by hand, but then this, th these thinner lines are by machine. It is, yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's just, yeah, it's a very unrestrained way of, of going at the process mm -hmm. of quilting, I think. And then beads and the shape of these beads are, are really replicating the shape of the stitches. There, there's a, a real conversation happening Absolutely, there. Absolutely, yeah. And mm -hmm. you know, the, even going back, the, there's just subtle things that are happening in these pieces that there's an explosive, you know, this flower blooming out of this space, but then everything else is a, a, little, a little quieter. Even, even these bows that sort of like hint at these butterflies and, and mm -hmm. the use of bound materials as well, I think is fascinating in this piece. And the title is Big Flower Bar. Are there like spaceships involved here? Or? Yeah, there's, there's <laughs> these kind of, I, I, I don't know if I know the first name them. as spaceships, okay. but these yeah. structures that are mm -hmm. very, very invented, very amorphous. Yeah. They, they do feel like in, in some ways quite Dwelling. Nice. They do certainly feel they're, like they're like dwelling. Dwelling. Yeah. yeah. Oh, beautiful. And then this next artist, I saw 
a, a show at the Linden Sculpture Garden recently mm -hmm. of her work there. Yeah, Elnaz Giovanni, who does work related, uh, you know, that, that's, that's largely you know, felt and embroidery. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's, they're, they're really quite profound pieces. Just, I, they, and this is, a, this is nice seeing these two works side by side because this hot pink thin line is with a machine, but then this is all hand embroidered. Machine, machine raw edge applique. I remember being really struck seeing so many works of art all together of the language that repeats with the hands and the legs and the limbs. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's these, these kind of body issues that, that come up in her pieces, certainly. The headless yeah. figure, mm -hmm. the, the kind of dog shape that isn't being confined by by this halo that sort of surrounds it. Mm -hmm. Then this, this Helen and Brian Richter is based in Philadelphia, and she, in addition to to quilting these these really pretty pretty perfect you know, perfect forms that are kind of minimal in their in their quality, she hand dyes many of her, her pieces as well too to get the colors absolutely exact. She can she can manipulate the, the dyeing process as well too with this purple color where she's bleached out some of the dye. And she has a process where she uses screen printing as well to create some of the, the fabric patterns here. You can see in, in this section. And, and then these two sort of margin elements at the very top and the very bottom of the piece also are, are screen screen printed with dyes. Mm -hmm. And just very parallel lines in the quilting, but not always at an even spacing. So it kind of keeps you guessing visually where there's a, a thin line next to a wider line. Very beautiful. And when it's called Auntie, Auntie. Auntie. Mm -hmm. you know, many of her works are are a, a little more formal, a little more abstract, but probably just as many uh, for the limited time that I've, I've known her work, focus on the, the figurative as well. Mm. This piece is, is a collaborative uh, a collaborative quilt done by Della Wells, a well-known collage artist from here in Milwaukee, along with Anne-Marie Gurdich, who's a uh, uh, outsider artist and, and does many, many different kinds of, of work. Uh, but she's based in Tacoma, Washington. And then Sandy Combs as well uh, is the third collaborator and does a large amount of you know, this, this very fine stitching and mm -hmm. especially this, the density of some of the stitching on the figure as well. Look at this found stained glass and Absolutely. Cathedral windows, patchwork. Della is just like such an extraordinary Milwaukee artist. She, she and, and she's is. part of the folk art. Um, yeah, the folk yeah, art yeah, community, like that's a the outsider she art claims, yeah. She's mm -hmm. certainly like wrapped up in that world, but she's yeah. she's really in the contemporary art world now. Absolutely. Well, I mean, Absolutely. She's, she's certainly it's cool that she can be in both though. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> All right, this piece is, is by Liv Onrude and is an example of, uh, you know, you'll, you'll have to help me on this. I, I'm not really sure what is the correct term. I'm tipping my hat on, on this. I would call this rug hooking. Rug hooking? Okay. Yeah. I've, I've heard alternatively tufting. Mm -hmm. um, yes, rug tufting uh -huh. I think those well. are so very not similar. Sure if there's a distinction there, so if anyone is, is more well Yeah, versatile. add in the comments, <laughs> let us know if it's rug hooking or tufting. <laughs> Be a highly colorful. Do you know if it was done with a machine or by it, hand? It was. This was done with a okay. a, a, rug, a tufting gun. Mm hmm. Yeah, and these faces you maybe don't see them immediately, you, 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 and then there's, there's, especially this figure that's upside down with their hair. These koi fish on a leg. With what what is negative and what is positive space. In this piece, mm -hmm. you know, even like within the bodies of the two mirrored figures, 
there are there's all this plant growth and there's little little vignettes that exist within each figure's arm and each mm -hmm. figure's body and they kind of morph into one another. Yeah. So interestingly, a, a piece that um, isn't textile, um, but is, is referencing textile and referencing the idea of the plan of a quilt uh, done by Phoenix Brown, a, another mm -hmm. Milwaukee-based artist. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And this artist was... So this artist is Josie Love Roebuck, and you know, she's a, a phenomenal young artist who creates work that really starts to uh, starts to embody this idea of, of being being raised in kind of multiracial households and um, ideas of, of you know, mixing these different materials together as well too of yeah the yarn and the painting I, I I'm not seeing anything machine pieced, so it's not that same combination I, that we've been I, looking at. To my knowledge, I don't know that she does any kind of machine yeah. piecing. Yeah, so um, it's handwork and painting. And then look at this belt buckle. There's wild horses, or horses running without sad saddles. And Josie is one of several artists that were also in seams. So it's Absolutely. been fun to have a few artists that we're seeing again, and then a few artists that are new. And just so many interesting ways of displaying work as well, and like comfort with these curling in. And it's, for me, that's used to having to have a four inch sleeve and follow certain rules to be part of the quilt world and the art world. It's fun to see these things that exist it's, more specifically in the art world that are. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's fun. There's so many different methods in, in mm -hmm. this exhibition to hanging things. And there's some things that are, of course, more conventional. They're mm -hmm. on stretcher bars and frames. And, and but yeah, I mean, like existing mm -hmm. on super long nails that are, are gone through the wall and just hanging on a bar is, of course, a completely appropriate way to display textile. Yeah, absolutely. And then here, total opposite, we've got a beautiful work in a frame. And I had just met Hannah at the Wisconsin Biennale at the Museum of Wisconsin Art. She received, I think, two awards in that exhibition. And this is a totally different kind of work. This is a totally different kind of work. Uh, a lot of the work that she's probably best known for is, is her paper making work. Uh, but this piece is a, a little more experimental where she's still bringing in some paper making. If, I, I don't know how well this mm -hmm. is picking up, but you can see these looser threads at the top that form this very open weave that goes through the whole piece, but she's mm -hmm. dipped the entire weave into paper pulp so there's sort of this paper on top that creates an open matrix and then there are hexagons out of fabric and then so many beads in this piece the, the beading is absolutely incredible in this piece the, the the sheer number of different processes i mean there's beading there's mm -hmm. weaving like heidi mm -hmm. said there's quilts there's there's paper making that she's done and then beaded a little center into each of these yes. what almost look like flowers uh, throughout the piece. And this, you know, this open section of this weaving too is so interesting. Absolutely, yeah, these, these delicate little ways to be unconventional with the materials. Yeah, it's a really, really a masterpiece in, in mm -hmm. how many kinds of materials you can emerge and still have the, the piece become a cohesive, um, mm -hmm. a cohesive thing. Yes. And who's this next artist? So this next artist is Ella Clemens, and she's you know done a few series now. She had a, a, a few pieces at another gallery, uh, a bar in the in the city, where she ended up doing a, a series of, of billboards done in the same manner as, as these pieces that are um, bar bathrooms around Milwaukee. There's only one piece that isn't a Milwaukee dive bar bathroom, this, this one up here. <laughs> um, but there's just a tremendous, 
you know, care and tenderness, I think, with these pieces. Like mm -hmm. to to take a subject that's so like utterly gross as you know, a a bathroom at, at the Summerfest concert grounds with wet wads of toilet paper and cigarettes and beer cans that are just haphazardly discarded and to so carefully stitch every little piece of, of wet dissolving toilet paper. There's <laughs> like there's there's a humor to them as well. Mm -hmm. They're 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 kind of they're funny but there's I, to me, I feel there's something very profound about these pieces as well. I agree, and there's they're installed with very tiny little nails, mm -hmm. so they're not like a sewing straight pin, it's a nail. And then the wispy edges are just, they play with the wall in such a really beautiful way. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we've seen this artist previously. Yes, we talked a little bit earlier about mm -hmm. Natasha Das. Uh, but yeah, two more examples of, of her work, this, this density of, of embroidery that kind of floats on, on this surface. Mm -hmm. And then our last artist for this room. So this, this artist is Brianna Bibbs, a Chicago-based art artist who, for, for these pieces, she hand spins all of the wool for these pieces which are really she considers them diary pages or, or uh, journal pages rather and each one you know happens over a specific time span that she's recording and these pieces were earlier on in her experimentation with adding polymer clay uh, in, into the pieces as well too it's, it's a, a really it, it's a surprising way to use the medium like she's even playing i mean some elements strike me as like a bit of a visual pun almost of, of taking polymer clay into long lines and then and then bringing them together the same way you would spin the wool together it's yes. like the, this whole careful process you know kind of a, a, a I, I don't necessarily want it's to say it's true, but it's like a very self-referential playful, playful mm -hmm. way of, of saying like this is what's happening to the, yes. the rest of the piece this little braid oh, yeah all right, and then here in the corner is another, the last piece by me in the show is this um, fabric vase. So inside of here is a Tapu Chico glass, and it's made specifically with fabric from my travels. So this is fabric from France, Italy, and Seoul in South Korea. And then here over the desk, we've got oh, one okay. last piece by Judith One Mullen. more, excuse the mess behind. <laughs> this is um, this is another Judith Mullen, the same artist who did the large piece in the in the other room. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, another example of that using kind of a tree bark texture. And as we go on our tour, we have only one room left. Oh, so can we stop in the hallway. Yes. Oh yeah, we have a couple things for, we want to see in the hallway. One more thing, we can take a pause here. So these mm. are so the Portrait Society Gallery. We have a, a deep interest in incarcerated artists as, as mm -hmm. well too and for a long while now we've been doing this show with 65 incarcerated artists called art against the odds and this artist here who's done the, the, the small chicken was involved in, in that project he would do these small abstract paintings that sometimes landscape paintings that are just an inch by an inch like the size of a postage stamp and he's recently moved prisons and at the new prison that he's he's at, there's there's another man named named Floyd Schrock, who is a really expert crocheter. And uh, M. Winston commissioned Floyd to create the the chicken from his his drawing mm. as as an object. And I, I think he got it pretty much perfect. Oh yeah, Every it's such a wonderful like, pair. Even this little yellow line on top of the the chicken's comb is is right there. Oh. And then also, we've got a few artists here in the hall. So this artist is, is Melissa Scherer Perre, and she is like just just a wonderfully diverse artist in, in her practices. She does both these silk paintings, uh, which she's fairly well known for. It's 
something, it's a similar process to, to a batik. She uses wax to section off areas that she can dye individually. And she also does the, these vessels that are made of ground up paper, pulp. They the, feel so like kindred spirits with the vessels that I make. I would yes, love to yes. do a show with her one day <laughs> because she's also trying to deal with her recycling bin, I think. And uh, she's absolutely. got like glass or other kinds of substrates that then she's adding her paper mache, which, which is, or not paper mache, it's paper pulp. Paper pulp, yeah. That then she turns into kind of a self-drying clay and she dyes them really wonderful colors. And I just saw some work of hers at Myad, the Milwaukee Institute of Art and Design show, as well as I've seen her work at the Real Tinsel Gallery mm -hmm. for those. And, oh, yeah, the three-dimensional, and especially to have these next to that pairing with the flat and 3D is, is, is very special. You can yeah, see a little closer. closer. And then also the way that they're in here, it looks like they are tacked maybe with a bit of thread that's holding them taut. I don't think it's yeah, a I, metal or a staple no, or I, a glue. I, it looks like I believe they're sewn, they're sewn into, into the, the base. Board. Yeah. Yeah, just very, very beautiful way of framing and displaying that work. And here again, we get to see two pieces from Kate Flake. Two, yeah, two more examples of her, of her cyanotypes on, onto fabric that she's then. I don't know how well it's coming through in the in the video, but she's she's sewn into the contours of, of all of the you know of all of the lines of the fingers and all of the lines and curves of the body, so that they they have this very human like presence in, they in do. the space. They do. And they are basically at scale as well, too. They're, they're at a human scale, which I mm -hmm. think further compounds that, that aspect of, of being with, with a person in this hard time of you know, waiting for a diagnosis. And yeah, just, I mean, they're, the softness, the three dimensional quality, it, even just feeling blue with these soft lavenders. It, um, you, fe you feel a lot for her and with her in these pieces. You absolutely do. And there's, there's something, I mean, there's something almost classical about these pieces as, as well, too. I, this, mm. this one in particular, I mean, the, the poses, the, the, mm -hmm. the reduction of the colors through the cyanotype as well, too. They almost, there's something marble-like, yeah. this, this operatic sculptural pose, which is just so... I mean, I get emotional, I think, every time I see mm -hmm. this piece of clasping of these hands. And, uh, you know, they're, they're hung with, I think it's a straight pin? It's a straight pin, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and just beautifully installed on the wall, you know, allowed to be themselves, to be 3D, to, to do all of these things, Absolutely. and to, to really hold this space so beautifully together. They do, you know, w without any framing on these, they, they, they really just float off of all of it. Mm -hmm. And then this is one more of uh, Lisa Marie Barber's from the other room as well, too. More of these, these flowers, really dwellings. amazing flowers, yeah. invented structures, cyanotypes of, of drawings and other uh, floral forms of hers as well. Mm -hmm. And now, and now the, the last room in the show. So we have one more example of the collaborative work of Della Wells, Anne Marie Gergich, and Sandy Combs. And just a, a much larger piece than the piece in the other room, and mm -hmm. really an accomplished work. I mean, it is, it is absolutely stunning every it's you can endlessly discover more things about this piece as well which is almost i mean it bears repeating but it's almost a theme of the show all, all so many of <laughs> these pieces are so labor intensive and there's so mm -hmm. much happening that you really you can really get lost in them and mixing you know work with found work and found objects and exactly things yeah real connectedness 
of working with the things that they're able to find. Oh, these fingernails with glitter. Mm -hmm. And then this is hung with these loops. And I remember again, when I popped in here, you helped figure out a little bit of this wood. Oh yeah, we've made the bar for <laughs> mm -hmm. it, but yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's that, that's really, not too challenging, thankfully. No, <laughs> it's a very elegant solution. And the way that it hangs is so lovely. The other piece that we saw before, it had pieces hanging from it. And, and so I imagine they would be really special side by side if that could happen I, one day as well. I think so, maybe one day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. or just as she makes more works like this, because it's just so exciting to see her quilting instead of um, only, you know, specifically collage, which she's the most known for. Okay, and then this is a really remarkable, I feel like this is an installation. It, it is much yeah. more of an installation by Alexis Ortiz, you know, meditating on the idea of it's always home and it's always making space and, and creating a space. The, the, the quilt top here sits on top of this sort of superstructure that encloses the sewing machine and creates this, this feeling and, and like within, when you, when you peer inside of this structure, the light coming into the gallery comes through the quilt as, as almost a stained glass window. It's, it's a gorgeous effect. And yeah, I mean, it really mm -hmm. speaks to this idea of, of, of making a space that is a, a space where, where you can be at, at home. Mm -hmm. And my friend Amanda Nada came up to see this show and she was obsessed with this work. She loved it so much. The, these dolls. Ah, uh, yes, mm -hmm. the dolls are fantastic as well, too. <laughs> Dan Devani showed that they're, they're really, I, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a little, it's a lot, I think, that some people have very differing reactions to, to these dolls. People either really love them yes. or they really <laughs> are, are kind of put off by them, which is an amazing thing for art to be able to do. Mm -hmm. I, I, think, I think dolls, in general, just maybe do that for people a little bit. They're, we, you engage with them, I think, differently than other artwork. They, they ask you to, to look at, at them as more of a person, I think, mm -hmm. than, than an artwork, which is a, a, a phenomenal thing for, I think, an object to do, to not be confined to this place of, of, of being an art object on a wall. It's asking you to, to say like, hey, I have an identity and I'm looking back at you. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah, I, I think so many paintings you know, can't do that. These, these can really, really do that. There's no, <laughs> there's no plane of separation between these and the viewer. Oh, yeah. The mother and child so cool. is, is mm. particularly amazing for the little. So those are a pair. The, those two are yeah. a pair, one <laughs> And then this piece is Rosie Petri. Yeah, Rosie Petri. A little more abstract, I would say, than much of her other mm -hmm. figurative work as well. Um, but but an absolutely, like, it, it just like fills this room with kind of like a lot of light. Uh, yeah. And the title, it gets better. Yes, yes. From 2023. And this is very unique for Rosie as well in that there isn't a binding around the edge of this quilt. So it's an unbound quilt for us quilters who are curious about that. And these, I believe, are nails that are used to yeah. connect it to the wall. So she's sewn around the edge, but we are able to see some batting there. And it's fun to see choices like that being made. And it, for me, part of why it works so well is that these are raw edge pieces of fabric, which I would say is pretty typical for Rosie to work with, with a raw edge instead of turned edge applique. Um, and yeah, she's, uh, Rosie and I have in common that she was an artist in residence at the Fister Hotel, and I'm doing that artist residency now. And so especially at that time, Rosie was really well known for portraits and depicting people. And so it's fun to see, it's really fun to see this abstraction.
And then these are two artists that we've seen and one new artist that yes, we haven't seen. Yes. So a few objects, uh, you know, some more of some smaller pieces by, by Kate Flake, uh, continuing to meditate on this idea of, of the body and, and tracing the contours of the body. And so a doll by, by Della Wells. And then this artist we haven't seen yet. Her, her name, it's, a, it's another example of rug hooking or tufting. And the, the artist's name is Sherry Urquhart. A lot of her work is much, much larger in scale than this, but all of her work is um, you know, a, a difference from Liv Andrew's other piece. These are all hands tufted as well. Mm -hmm. Many different types of materials as well, too. And, and I was lucky, if, I think it was a couple of years ago now at this point. I think it was <laughs> almost five years ago. Oh gosh, was that before <laughs> the pandemic? Did. That's a long I, time. I, well, it was right during the pandemic. <laughs> oh, okay. Maybe it was before. Yeah, but seeing her work in this gallery and then also in the warehouse art space here in Milwaukee. It's massive. Like the size of this wall behind me is Huge, the typical yeah. size of one work of art from her. A lot of them are, are eight feet tall by ten feet wide and mm -hmm. yeah, they're, they're profound pieces. Yeah. All right. Well everyone thank you for going on this tour with us. There's a link in the caption for this video that links to the Portrait Society Gallery and the page that they've made for the Crisscross exhibition where you can see all of the names of all of the artists written down. There are lots of links and details for that. Um, make sure you like and subscribe. And if you are near the Milwaukee area, the Portrait Society Gallery is one of my favorite galleries here in the city. It is on the fifth floor of the Marshall Building. So you'll be heading to the Marshall Building and then up to the fifth floor. And there's just always something special here. What's the next show that's going on? So the next show is called Magic Mud. And it's another group show of all ceramic artists. And the core group of artists in the exhibition are going to be from a Chicago-based uh, collective that, that they represent the work of disabled artists called Project Onward. And we'll have a, a, a nice group of artists from that group as well as many um, Wisconsin-based ceramicists as well. Oh, I'm very excited to see that. Ceramics was my first love, and I always enjoy seeing that. Well, Paul, thank you for the tour. It's my pleasure. Thank you, everyone, for watching as well, too.